it was a busy time on Edward's branch line. Old areas of Brendam docks were being rebuilt, and the engines worked hard bringing supplies to and from the quay. Sir Topham Hatt put Bill and Ben in charge of shunting. The twins were pleased to get away from the clay pits, but were soon feeling hot and bothered. A new crane had been brought to where the docks were being restored. He was called Cranky, and the twins found he was living up to his name. You're useless little bugs, he complained. If you shunted your trucks on the outside lines, I wouldn't have so far to travel. So he's cranky and lazy, muttered Bill. We've shunted our trucks like this hundreds of times, squeaked Ben, and none of the other cranes have complained about it. Well, I'm complaining now! Cranky banged his load down, making the engines jump. Later, the twins told Donald and Douglas all about Cranky. You're pulling our wheels, said Douglas, rolling his eyes. We've been down here plenty, and the big fella's not had a bad thing to say to us. Aye, put in Donald, and he's got important work to do. You two and your tricks are probably driving him mad. We're, We're not playing tricks, tricks, protested the twins. Douglas scoffed doubtfully. I'll believe it when I see it. When Cranky heard the Scottish twins were on his side, he grew bossier than ever. Come on, come on, he called. Push those trucks closer to me. Ben pushed the trucks closer, too close, as Cranky dropped a crate right on top of him. Ouch, he cried. Not that close, growled Cranky. Boko arrived to collect some trucks. Smarten up, Ben, he scowled. This is no time for games. Before Ben could reply, Boko rolled away, and Cranky smirked to himself. Later, Bill pushed some flatbeds to the key. Push those trucks onto the outside lines, barked Cranky. It's easier for me to load up. Bill begrudgingly shunted the trucks to the furthest line from Cranky. Truthfully, he should have known better, but he was too cross to think clearly. He barely came to a stop when... Cranky left the pipes beside the flatbeds, right on Edward's line. The old blue engine screeched to a halt. Bill, he said, what's going on here? He's up to mischief, that's what, called Cranky. Am not, said Bill. He told me to put the trucks here. Ridiculous, Cranky replied. Surely you knew my arm couldn't reach you there. But, Bill began to say, that's enough, Edward cut in. We've lots of work to do and no time for nonsense. If you don't behave, I'll be having a word with Sir Topham Hatt. Bill looked sulkily at his buffers, while Cranky sniggered quietly. Unfortunately for the twins, Edward didn't have to tell Sir Topham Hatt. The dock manager had already complained about the delays. Bill and Ben, he began sharply, this new crane has an important job to do. I hear you have not been helping him. I thought I could trust you two with a job like this. But, but sir... No buts, continued Sir Topham Hatt. You will go to your sheds and think about how you will improve your behavior tomorrow. Oh, sir, sir, please, we... Bill, Ben, go. The twins could do nothing else but puff away sadly. That night, a fierce storm raged across the island. The dock manager halted all work and ordered Edward, Boko, and the Scottish twins to take shelter in a shed by the old dock. Goodness me, remarked Boko. Where did this weather come from? I didn't like it, grumbled Donald. And this shed's doing nothing to keep me dry. Douglas laughed. Come off it, Donny. Think of yon cranky. Poor lad's taking the worst of it up there. Well, we may not be completely dry, said Edward, but at least this shed will keep us safe. But Edward was wrong. Out on the ocean, 
an old tramp steamer was fighting through the storm. Its propeller had been damaged by the rough waters. With no control, the ship was steered towards the docks by the waves. It ran aground and headed straight for the shed. the engines from under the shed. I can't! wailed Cranky. When the storm had finally subsided, Sir Topham Hatt rushed to the scene of destruction. He surveyed the damage, then spoke to Cranky. I'll send for Bill and Ben to help you, he called, and then you can help the others. Oh, please hurry, pleaded Cranky, and tell them I'm sorry I was rude to them. So it was you, pondered Sir Topham Hatt. Oh dear, I owe those engines an apology. Bill and Ben were cross at being woken up and at having to help Cranky. But when they saw the other engines, they forgot to be cross and put everything right at once. Soon, Cranky was upright and clearing wreckage to free the engines. Oh, said Douglas, thank you, lad. What will we have done without ye? Well, I had to be rescued before I could rescue you, said Cranky. But I never thought it'd be by a couple of bu- uh. Cranky was about to say bugs, but quickly corrected himself. Uh, small engines. Thank you. I'll never be rude again. However, you two mites are in my way, so move over! Mites? Bill cried. Never be rude again, he says, grumbled Ben, and the twins began to huff away. Don't move, called Edward. You're still attached to Cranky. But it was too late. When the docks had been restored, Cranky was moved closer to the other cranes. He now helped to unload heavy cargo from visiting ships. Cranky still looks down on the twins, but ever since that stormy night, never calls them bugs or mites, for he knows they might bite back.